Hey guys, this is uh, going to be a new channel for Aquaponics. Um, I want to give you guys the short, sweet information um, that you're going to need that I don't believe most people out here doing this thing are telling you about. Um, there, there is a lot to know, folks, and it's not just about feeding your goldfish or feeding your fish or whatever you're doing. Uh, it's much more than that, and especially depending on what what you're going to be growing and uh, how big are your fish and all that. I mean, there's a lot of factors into this thing. And uh, everybody's system is different. Everybody's water source is different. So you're going to need to become a chemist, whether you like it or not, uh, especially water chemistry. Uh, pH is very, very crucial to your system. And uh, for those people out there that are just starting, you're going to have some, uh, some headaches, okay? I'm just telling you right now. And uh, you're going to want to meddle with things and uh, you can manipulate your system, but uh, you can also really screw it up too. And uh, I think uh, that's what needs to be focused on, is uh, the reality of the backyard grower. Uh, a lot of people are just making it seem too easy, and it's not. Um, it's just not. Especially when you do all of this by yourself, uh, and you don't have a team of people there to help you, and to inspire you, and to ask the right questions, and think the right way. So uh, you're going to learn all this on your own. It's a lot to learn for one person, especially with no knowledge. Uh, I've got two and a half years experience into this thing. Um, I wish I would have made more videos sooner so I could show you the progress. Um, I've got plenty of pictures though. Um, but I want to walk you through my system and just tell you uh, how it works and uh, maybe it can help you. So. Uh, Forgive the shoddy camera work. I don't have uh, any other way to do this than to walk around with the camera. So uh, we're going to start with my sump tank. You're going to need a sump tank. Surely you've, you've gone and looked at design. Uh, that's, that's where you need to start. Uh, you're only as good as your design. And I've learned that the more time and the more components that you put into your system, usually the better system you're going to have. Um, especially with valves. I encourage you, if you can afford valves, get valves. Uh, you're going to need them. Uh, it, le it lets you control things a lot better. So let's walk you through this system. I want you to think of the human body when you look at an aquaponic system. Okay, we've got our sump tank. That's pretty much our heartbeat. Uh, you've got your heart, basically, is your pump. And it's going to pump up through your veins, and it's going to go down uh, through here into your uh, fish tank. And your fish tank is going to have fish in it, hopefully. And uh, they're going to produce ammonia. And uh, just by breathing, pooping, and peeing, uh, mainly breathing seems to be uh, the most uh, ammonia because uh, that's constant. Uh, and then the poop, and then a little bit of pee. So that's how that works. Uh, they, it shows up in the nitrogen cycle. You have ammonia. Uh, nitrites come in to eat the ammonia. And uh, then nitrates come in to eat the nitrites. Uh, nitrates are very poisonous to your fish and to your plants. Uh, so that's the rough part of your system, that's called cycling. Um, you're going to need a lot of uh, uh, biological surface area, BSA. Uh, you can go look that up, that's very, uh, very in-depth stuff. Uh, I'm going to recommend Bright Agritech. Uh, I'm going to send Dr. Nate's story. I'm going to send all you people his way if you really want to get complicated about it, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's where I've learned a lot of things, so go out there and check him out. That is Dr. Nate Story with Bright Agritech. They are a wonderful group of human beings there to help you and uh, answer your questions. They, they are legitimate human beings. Um, and then in here, we have another fish tank. And this is just a, a gift. I don't know, let's see, where is he? Oh, there he is. There he is. I hope you guys can see him. That two and a half pound white tilapia. I don't know what I'm gonna do with him yet. He was a gift. I'm debating on what I wanna do. Uh, ignore these water levels too, folks. Uh, I'm trying to give you system design, but I want to focus more. That's up to you how you design your system. Um, I'm not. I, I, my design is my design. Nobody else has mine. Uh, nobody else is probably going to have yours. You're going to make your own. But there's just a few basic rules that you need to follow. Um, this is my holding tank. This is where I pump. Uh, I hate to say it, but garden water, or uh, I'm sorry, garden hose water, just from the tap on my house. Uh, it just holds the water. Um, I can make it into a fish tank if I want to. Um, but it's all plumbed into the system, and all I gotta do is open that valve down there, and um, it just releases that water in there. Now, I will tell you on a side note, not to get too 
complicated on you already, but I was going to put in a uh, reverse osmosis system into my uh, holding tank, and that way it's pure water. Uh, there's nothing in that water that I am going to miss. Uh, but, and I, when I say that, I'm talking about carbonates. Folks, you need to study up on carbonates. Um, that's that's going to be not an enemy, but it can make it can make you have a couple of headaches. Um, some people say carbonates are good. Some people say they're bad. You need to decide on which one you are. Okay. Uh, for the backyard grower, maybe carbonates are, are okay. Um, I'm trying to uh, understand both sides of it and use carbonates when I need to. Um, sorry, my dogs are barking, and that's not a good thing. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, then we have the, the fish tank. I'm going to highly encourage you guys to get uh, goldfish. Start out with goldfish for the ammonia cycle or the nitrogen cycle. Um, they're inexpensive, and if they do die, I think it'll be okay. Uh, not that we want that, but and, and let them live. If they can live in your system, let them. They are, they are a wonderful addition to your system. If you're trying to grow tilapia or catfish or whatever you're trying to grow, there's really nothing wrong. I hear largemouth bass are the, are the hardest thing to keep, uh, but it also depends on your climate. Um, I live in uh, the southeast, um, and we get pretty darn hot summers, and we get pretty darn cold winters, so I've got to figure out what's best for my situation, and, and you will too. If you're up north, I'd say go with uh, trout. Uh, anywhere else, I think tilapia is pretty much the way to go or even catfish. I'm a huge fan of catfish, but you cannot go wrong with goldfish, folks. They are amazing, amazing little creatures, and I, I think everyone should have them in their system. So I've got that one plumbed up into my grow bed. Here's the grow beds. This is where you're gonna put your plants. And uh, then I've got, this is the very important part, folks. This is a biofilter, and uh, you're gonna need a biofilter in your system. I highly encourage you to get uh, bio balls as they will let your bacteria have a lot of surface space to live on um, And I highly encourage you if you can afford it folks the more you can afford the better your system's gonna be okay uh, It's just that simple um, I've got hydrotin in mine. I've got an excellent source on getting it um, So it's worth it and we'll get into that. Here's the here's the grow beds. Oh, I want to make one more note uh, if I could have done things a little bit different, the way my biofilter is set up, I've, I've got a pump in there that pumps into my grow beds, um, and it's at the bottom of this green barrel, which is inside an IBC tote. I really like this idea. Um, it pumps straight from the bacteria source into my grow beds. I really like this idea. Um, I, but uh, here's the thing I would have done. I would have put all of my goldfish in this tote, uh, kept them nice and safe, and uh, they would just, they, that would be a good idea in my opinion. Um, I, that's just my flavor on that. But here we go, okay, uh, here's, the, here's the magic. We've got some cucumbers growing. They're doing very, very well. Uh, I've probably pulled about 40 cucumbers off this thing in the last three and a half months. So I'm very happy with that. Um, you can see the corn is, is taking off in the back and it was, it was planted late. Uh, we've got some broccoli. It, it had a hit on the caterpillars, uh, but I still think it's going to do very well. I mean, look at the stock on this broccoli, folks. It, it's just, it's busting at the seams. Um, it's just unbelievable. I know that's not the healthiest thing in the world, um, but it is still going to produce. Uh, here's what I'm very proud of in such a young system is my tomatoes. They are getting ready to be pruned and uh, are harvested, I should say. And I'm just very happy with where they're at for such a young system. Um, here's part of your system I want to show you. This is the best example I have. This is a bell siphon. That water flows from that biofilter into here. And uh, it's controlled with valves. You can see the valve. Each bed needs a valve. Uh, but it's about 8 inches. And that bell siphon just slips over the standpipe. Just like so. And uh, you can you can YouTube bell siphons. They're not. I don't think they're all that complicated. And uh, it basically just creates a suction, and it's going to suck that water right out of there, and it's going to dump it into my one of my holding tanks. And uh, it's just another spot for water to go in my system design. Like I said, I don't think you can go wrong when you add extra things to your system. I just don't. 
Uh, remember, you're trying to create a pond environment. You can see one getting ready to dump its water, or it just, or it just turned off. Uh, looks like it turned off. But uh, I've got a few fish in there. It's kind of my nursery. This is the cleanest water in the system since it's just been dumped uh, by the grow bed. And I'm trying to nurse them back to health. I don't see them in there, but there's about two or three sick tilapia. Uh, there's this, some spearmint somebody gave me. Here's another little experiment that I'm doing. A uh, different type of grow application. I got some bio balls in there with some uh, cups. And uh, we'll, we're going to see what that does. I'm not too certain about it just yet. We're going to have an algae problem if I let that board off of there. But anyway, that's more complicated. Uh, here's my pepper uh, bed. I have produced quite a few peppers off of this plant in particular. This plant means a lot to me. I uh, started it inside in my little 20 gallon uh, setup inside and um, yeah it's just a special little plant. It's done very very well. I've probably pulled about 20 peppers and we looks like we got eight more coming and then there's a lot of little flowers. Uh, you can see some right there and then here's, a, here's another plant. We're getting ready to have a lot of peppers. I hope you guys can see these ones that are coming in. There's some flowering. I mean, you can see it. Uh, we got some basil. This stuff's done pretty well. Uh, here's my okra. It's done pretty well. I've already harvested some of it. I can show you pictures if you need it. Uh, but we got some lettuces, some kale. We got a lot growing in here. Uh, and then it goes back down into the sump tank, folks. So uh, that's pretty much my system. And uh, now on the, on the other side, that's only about a third of the system. I'm building my system piece by piece because I want to learn each part of it so well. Uh, this is my next part. This is going to be a raft system. And I've just got a little two inch pipe uh, with a uniseal fitting. And uh, yes, I did cut through a liner. Uh, most people might think that's a no-no, but uh, just take your time with what you do, folks. Once you, that's another thing I want to tell you. Once you start cutting, you need to you need to be sure that's what you want to do because there's no getting that back um, anyway so that's another part of my system folks but uh, I will I will constantly keep you updated on where I'm at with my system uh, you might ask well what would possess you to do all this why can't you just grow uh, in the dirt well you can and uh, it's a great place to start learning how uh, plants and gardening so I don't discourage that but folks, when it comes to a renewable uh, source of food, I don't think anything beats aquaponics. And of course, you want to get non-GMO seeds. Um, do not buy genetically modified seeds. Uh, there is no point in that. You are eating poison. And I, that's just the way it is. Uh, you can thank Monsanto and uh, your local governments or the federal governments for that. Um, anyway, I won't go into that world. Um, trying to keep this thing simple here but it's hard not to that's kind of why I'm involved in all this stuff guys um, there you need to establish a food source and that's what would make somebody do all of this uh, especially the more it is the more it is um, you know you're gonna put more work into it and the more work that you put into your system the more design that you make the better your systems gonna be folks and you're gonna have a lot of troubleshooting uh, but you will get it yeah uh, give yourself an ample amount of time to learn and learn each step and learn each part of your system because it is all relevant to each other and the smallest little things matter um, so just take your time and build with confidence and uh, you know just uh, have fun folks you're gonna have a lot of fun it is frustrating though especially when you do this thing by yourself it is frustrating and uh, but walk away guys when you're tired and you've spent your time on your system walk away from it okay because you'll make mistakes you'll make you could make things worse on yourself um, and this is this video is I hope I've stayed on point it's about design and just the beginning understandings of aquaponics and uh, there's a lot to it folks but once you put all that time into it this system will run itself if you've built it right and done everything that you're supposed to do um, it will run itself folks it will now you'll have to supplement it and I'm not gonna go into that on this video but uh, the heavier hitters that you have like tomatoes cucumbers things that flower you're gonna need to supplement your system I don't care what you say uh, magnesium and I'm gonna say it in this order magnesium potassium calcium and they're all three related and I am NOT a scientist I am NOT a chemist not one on paper I am one in a backyard sense, and you will be too, and you better want to be because you're going to need to be. 
Um, I don't see the point of just growing lettuces, okay? So you need to grow things that are worth growing. Uh, lettuces would be more of a commercial type thing. As far as a healthy garden for yourself and your family, you need to be growing fruitful uh, things like tomatoes and things like that, I, I think. Uh, I, I don't see why you would spend all this money and time to just grow lettuce. Uh, that's, I don't see why you would do that. Uh, hydrotin is not cheap. Uh, media is not cheap. So I think you need to be growing things that are worth the money that you're spending. Uh, to me, those are fruiting vegetables. That's just me. Um, and that's another thing about buying the hydrotin and the things like that. It is, uh, it's worth it because it's another place for your bacteria to live. And it's all about your bacteria, folks. And a lot of people look over the fish. Your fish need to be healthy. They need to be happy. And uh, if they're not, I think your whole system's going to suffer. And a lot of people worry about the plants over the fish. I think you need to go, um, you need to be addressing both. But your fish are really what drive your system. So if you've got healthy fish, you should have a healthy system. Uh, minus that whole supplementation thing. And those three element or um, those three nutrients that I talked about: magnesium, potassium, and um, calcium. They're all related, folks. They contend with each other, so you're going to have to know the balances between them. Um, and it's complicated. I'm not here to make up anything. It is complicated, folks. And there's people out there that know it way better. Um, but these are people that have a lot of time, a lot of schooling, and a lot of education and knowledge into the field. And uh, they they make it sound real easy. So I'm not going to get into mathematics. I think you need to understand uh, fish, water, and plants. Duh. I mean that's what aquaponics is. Um, and uh, definitely water chemistry, folks. You're going to have to become some type of water chemist and understand how important pH is. Uh, in my opinion, in my small tenure of time of two and a half years, you're going to need uh, your nitrifying acid which is what drives your system to drop that pH into about 6.2 and then try to buffer it up to about 6.5 6.6 and let it fall and just repeat that and you can do that with potassium uh, carbonates depending on how your system plays out if it if it falls real low um, you know it just depends on what you want to do you need to decide are you a hydroxide person or a carbonate person uh, because it matters, folks. Those carbonates can be tricky. Um, you lose a lot of control when you deal with carbonates. Uh, hydroxides are very strong, uh, but they are precise, and uh, they they can they can hurt your system um, if you put too much into them because they're very very strong. But anyway, that that's another video. Okay, my point is to stay on cue, build a good system. Okay, study your system design and commit to it and learn your system design very well because you're going to have a lot of troubleshooting uh, especially the bigger it is um, and the more openings the more ins and outs that you have it's it's every valve is connected to each other okay it is it all affects each other so you're going to need to learn that you're going to need to uh, do your cycling once you set your whole system up you're going to need your cycling you can do it with just ammonia um, I, I prefer to put goldfish in there Give yourself about 150 goldfish. Some some might die. Uh, I gotta tell you, in my experience, they haven't. They really haven't died. Well, I hear a lot of people saying their fish die through the cycling process. Mine really haven't died, so I don't know what they're doing or what their uh, beginning water source is. It's all about your beginning water source. So know your water source. Study your water source. It's gonna be very high, folks, and it is hard to drop your pH in the beginning. So I recommend, if you can't wait it out, um, I didn't wait it out. I wanted to lower mine. Once I found out how important pH was, I went out and bought phosphoric acid and dropped it. Okay? So that's, that's how I'm doing that. Um, and I'm building my system backwards, so I'm constantly adding just a little bit at a time because I'm putting carbonate water in there. So I need to lower it. Uh, this video is getting pretty long. We'll go into that on the next video, but I just want that to be fresh in your mind. Okay? Uh, you guys subscribe. Uh, please ask me any questions that you have. I would love to answer them, and I promise you I can point you in the right direction, uh, whether I know it or whether I don't know it. My goal is to help you and learn from my mistakes and my successes. Okay? Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.